Good afternoon. <clears throat> Welcome to Poet to Poet, Writer to Writer. I'm here with my guest, Gary Rainford. And, and actually, Gary uh, came all the way down from Maine, uh, Swan Island, Maine, which is like 45 minutes and a ferry ride uh, to get to the coast. And th he tells me that it's three hours drive from Portland, Maine to get to your, yes. your area. So yes. thank you. He has other business, too, but, um, you know. Um, but I'm very flattered that he, he took the time and effort to come all the way down for poet to poet, writer to writer. Um, so let me read a brief um, introduction to Gary. Uh, Gary Rainford is the author of two poetry collections, Salty Liquor and Liner, Liner Notes. Uh, lives on Swan's Island year-round with his wife and daughter, and wife came with you today. And uh, Gary's suite of poems, are We Are Here, was an honorable mention selected by Betsy Scholl for the Gabriel Zimprick Memorial Prize. His poem, Shaped by Tide, Salt Water, and Music, is published in a wide range of uh, literary magazines, university journals, and newspapers. Were you in the Somerville Times? Did I ever publish yes. this? Yes. Yes, there you go. So that you made it. You don't have to do anything else, right? <laughs> Line of Notes, says Gary, is a tribute to great songs, inspired musicians, poetic form, his love of singing in the shower, and playing acoustic air guitar. Um, so Gary... Um, you live up in Swans Island, which you just said is a long way from here. Um, what brought you there, and how is that isolation for a poet? I mean, I, I bet it's a double-edged sword. It's what brought me there? I was out in Oregon teaching at Southwestern Oregon Community College, and uh, my wife's mother mm -hmm. sent us the Yankee magazine, and there was an article from... Cliff Island was reaching out to young people to move to their island. They were going to lose their accreditation at their, their small island school. And they were looking for young people uh, who either had an interest in raising a family or had a family that they wanted to bring to the island so that they had numbers. And that, uh, there was a sticky note in the, in the magazine from, from my mother-in-law, and it said, you two are weird enough for this to work. Mm -hmm. And that just sort of planted the seed. I, I knew that I, I wanted to live near water. I, I was living on the West Coast, and where I was living up in Coos Bay, Oregon, I could afford. And uh, it turns out I, I can afford living on Swans Island as well. So that factor, uh, it just, it just it worked for but me. But you were living on an island in Oregon? No, I was oh, living, living on the coast. coast on the coast, uh, okay. But, uh, far enough north from north of of California where it was affordable mm -hmm. for a poet and a t as a teacher to make ends meet. The isolation is something that was just, uh, it's natural. I, I, I truly need isolation. Uh, I grew up on Long Island, New York, and it never was home for me. It was always I grew too up busy. there too, and it wasn't home for me. Huh? Yeah, That's and I, I was always looking for something else. and. Uh, when I was in graduate school, I, I did my graduate work on uh, Robinson Jeffers. Okay. And so I really connected with the isolated life he lived. Now you got your MFA? and um, I have my master's in, in literature. Yeah, okay. Um, and the isolation that he lived was the type of isolation I was looking for in my life. And and, and I, I landing on Swans Island, that it, I had, there's a, it's a, there are about 350 people. We're very isolated from the mainland. Uh, however, we've got a, a strong community, so I don't feel isolated, but we are remote, definitely remote. I never feel isolated. Okay. But on the other hand, like you were telling me, it's hard to get gigs at this time of year. That this, uh, yeah. It is hard to get gigs. Um, I've, I, I've got a radio gig in mm -hmm. Belfast uh, mm -hmm. next weekend, but everything else is lined up for April for Poetry Month. So, uh, I, I, uh, or during the summer months when, when uh, there's summer people around and you can line things up a little bit differently at bookstores. You tell me you have traffic. a great reading series there in the summer. We have a reading series at the library, yes. Mm -hmm. We bring main poets down, or up generally. Do you ever have Steve read. Luttrell out there? We have not, but that's a good name to put on my list. You know, he's on the Cafe Review, which is a mm -hmm. great, it is a great ma ma main magazine. Journal, definitely, yeah. out of Portland. Yeah, yeah. great. Yeah. Uh, okay, um, so um, your new book, uh, Liner Notes, you want to lift that up? Uh, 
Yeah. Uh, your subject uh, are, are your subjects going to be poems of musicians. Now I'm a big jazz fan. I noticed noticed to you, Ella Fitzgerald yes. was in there. Um, how let's take jazz. How does that lend itself to poetry? So or poetry lend itself right. to jazz. So, so for me, I think maybe I, I entered into the poetry music connection a little bit differently. Um, poetry, I didn't come to poetry until later on in college. Uh, I was, I loved music growing up. Mm -hmm. And I loved reading the lyrics and the liner notes. And so I came to Poetic Devices by reading liner notes of, of Pink Floyd and Elvis Costello. And they used to have really great liner notes. They right? really you did. Got the albums and things right. like that. Right. I used to look forward to that come, you know, the yeah. album coming, cracking it open. They're generally yeah. a multi genre with pictures and, and, oh, yeah. and, and words. Um, but for me, it wasn't so much the music, but the artist. I, 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 when, I, when I studied music, uh, studied, not really studied, but as it is, when I appreciate music, I also needed to understand the musician. I wanted to know about the musician's life. I kind of felt like it informed the song or their, their, their music in a way, uh, in a deeper way for me, knowing about the musician. And, and I do that with poets. And, and, and I was watching, it was a funny, it's on, it was on Facebook. Somebody had posted a video of Elvis Presley. Now he's, I mean, I'm, 49 yeah. and so Elvis was not my music right. but I could appreciate who he was and the it was in 1977 at uh, Rapid City South Dakota and it was one of his last performances and he gets up to the stage he just finishes a song and he's and he's, he's at the mic and and he has to get over to the piano and he's 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 staggering he's belligerent and he's bloated. He's bloated, and he's just having a rough time. And his his the the handler or the the other person on stage gets him at the at the piano. And now he's he's throwing rejoiners out to the crowd, and it's a packed crowd. And you just don't think it's going to go well. But then all of a sudden, his fingers key those notes on the piano, and it's magical. And he sings, and it's as though he was Elvis Presley the king and it was just complete artistry and so I felt such a connection as an artist I had just finished uh, I had just given up drinking and so I think I connected uh, as a result of that as well I saw you know I saw the struggle and the and the and the battle that this artist is having and and and, and you know I was battling with stopping uh, to drink and 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 I, I connected in such a visceral uh, deep way that I, I I wrote a poem about it, and it was fun. It was the one of the first times. My first book, um, Salty Liquor. All the poems, if they're not about me, they're about people I know. And this was this was the first poem that I had ever really written that was completely about somebody else. And so um, I wrote a second one. I just just on a lark of Tom Waits. And then right. I started thinking about other people who influenced me. I had just seen a concert a few years back of Elvis Costello. He'd come up to Orno. So I did an Elvis Costello one. And then I started seeing a pattern develop. And um, I, I, wanted to, I wanted to tell not just, I didn't want to communicate just the song. I wanted to communicate something about the musician's experience. I wanted a poem about the musician as a work of art. We're all works of art. In a we way. are. Yeah, yeah. But the musician is the work of art. The musician is the work of art. Okay. And then um, certain certain components started to fall into place. Uh, for instance, I needed to find a live performance, one live performance as the context for the poem, and I needed to integrate lyrics into the into the story i needed to know something about the artist right so i did quite a bit of research mm -hmm. 
Um, the, the, the small Elvis Costello poem that I have, I read his whole biography that had just come out that year, just for that one poem. Um, I think there are only four three-line tercets in that piece. Uh, for the viewing audience, what is a tercet? So a tercet is a, a three-line stanza. Okay. Yeah, normally, or not normally, but traditionally, a, a tercet has um, a, they're rhymed um, lines, but I, 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 I do not have a rhymed tercets, so okay. I, I break from that tradition a bit. And, <clears throat> and the tercets are interesting, too, because I... I I was writing in a. Well, you know, form. you say you said something. You break from tradition, and how about the musicians themselves? Do they, in some ways, break from traditions and experiment um, <clears throat> that you do? I, I believe the musicians that I connect with are musicians who are evolving as artists. Mm -hmm. So I think so. For instance, P.J. Harvey is is one of the musicians I use, and I, I kind of feel like her body of work is an evolution. Um, uh, Anthony, or, or Anthony Haggerty um, of Anthony and the Johnsons, uh, he's a, she's a transgender artist and has changed her name to some Anthony, which is a little bit less gender specific. And she is certainly an artist who is pushing and exploring and and, and, and trying to understand uh, our lives in a, in, a, in a deeper way. Okay. Now, I, 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 I like the, um, I was reading the Ella Fitzgerald uh, poem uh, titled um, Blue Skies. Yes. The song she sang, Blue, Blue Skies. Right. And it almost seemed like the way you had the poem at certain points, and it's true of a lot of your poems, is there's a certain cadence, and also I could imagine her scatting. Right. You know, did, was that intentional, or is there something I'm picking up? It it was not intentional. The what was intentional is the title. Um, originally, I was titling all these poems as the using the same title as the song that's showcased in the poem, but that just wasn't working out. And then I was going back into the body of work of the musician, finding titles that really re created a, an entirely new piece as a result of sharing that, that new title. So Blue Skies is from another song from her body of work. All the titles of these songs are from the, the body of work of the artist, but not the lyric that I'm showcasing in the poem. Now, we also have to cover a poem you did on Leonard Cohen. That it was a, He was a poet before he became a, um, a um, uh, singer and uh, right. lyricist and things like that. Um, and what interested me you know, in the poem is I think you quote him Yes, and you say something about it, you know. Even though he's getting older, his depression is lifted. Yeah, and um, and uh, yeah, actually, I think there's some scientific proof that you know, as you people get older, they get more comfortable with themselves. But um, uh, he did say, you know, it's almost like, and knowing him being a Buddhist, um, uh, that he was the physical body was decaying, and he was, and he was, it was actually like getting away from the confines of the flesh. He was getting right. more closer to the cosmos. I mean, right. what did you think about that? Uh, I, I definitely agree with that, especially what caught me on that particular um, piece is that this is just after the time when he, his, he, he, he goes away into seclusion to, to, to meditate in, in California. And I want to say he was away for at least five years. And in that time, his, his business uh, associate Bezel yeah, his, yeah. his 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 money. So he left more or less with with very little um, financially, and it 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 did not. It wasn't a problem. He was living in his daughter's house in a small room. Uh, that's all he wanted. He he just he said you know all the women, all the money, uh, the sex, drugs, and rock and roll cliche that he lived. Um, that that was that was a a detour for what he had discovered um, uh, in seclusion. Uh, yeah, the, I was reading something by Thomas Merton. He says, uh, "If we um, if if we say we arrived, we're lost." Uh -huh. uh, and you know, I think he you know maybe he had that perspective as he got older. Right. You, know, you never really arrive, and that's sort of ephemeral. Right. And, Right. Yeah. 
Yeah. He says, he has this, uh, so you remember in 1967, the, the So Long Marianne. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> it's a, a, a So a, Long Marianne, yeah. A, a love song, yeah. the whole album, love song yeah. to Marianne. Well, and this kind of connects, I think, with what you're saying. In, 19, in 2016, Marianne had just died. And, and in an in, I watched lots of interviews for this poem that I wrote for uh, mm -hmm. uh, Leonard Cohen. And he writes this letter to Marianne um, just after she passed. Uh, well, Marianne, it's come to this time when we are really so old and our bodies are falling apart, and I think I will follow you very soon. That was in July of 2016, and he died in November. So, you know, you have these connections with people, um, and then that body falls away. And, uh, and it, I, I hope to be in peace in a, in, in a similar way when I get to that point in my life. Or as Woody Allen says, I don't know if there's an afterlife, but I'll bring a change of underwear. That's a good point, just in case. Yeah. Well, listen. You have got 12 minutes to read from your work. Uh, and again, the book is titled Liner Notes, and it can be purchased on Amazon and on your website. Kind of, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, no, uh, yeah. you could get it at, at uh, North Country Press mm. at their store, and um, Amazon has it, any of the online bookstores, Barnes & Noble, Bam. And if, we, and if we wanted to find out more about you, your website My is website, you can find out more about me. You can connect with me, email me. Um, yeah. Ask me anything. How about if you go up to Swan Island? Can people drop by and say hello, Gary? Come up to Swan's Island if huh. you need a, a plumbing inspection. I'm a plumbing inspector. I All can right. give you some, uh, some, some information about that. Okay. Definitely. Great. All right. Well, why don't you read from your work? Thanks. This is called Bad Reputation. Ow! Joan Jet sandblasts the audience. Skin tight black leather jumpsuit. Barbie doll blue eyeliner, Gibson melody maker, guitar slung low, hips grinding, sweaty tattoos. I love rock and roll. Jet strips down words, bears breath, bears spit and sound. So come and take your time and dance with me, she winks, devoted to the ruckus pursuit of perfect three chord beer chugging truths. After the show, Jet sells Blackheart Records out the trunk of her producer's 1980s spoke-rimmed Cadillac. You'll get a kick out of this. So she was selling these records out in Long Beach, Long Island, yeah. after the gigs. Oh, yeah, yeah. All those. Uh, I, uh, I used to like to walk on Long Beach. They had all that great conicious and, right. and stuff on the boardwalk. Right. It was great. So this is actually a piece you had mentioned, Blue Skies. Summer time. Ella Fitzgerald, eyes closed and sweat running down her cheeks, jazzes every syllable into a thin line of horn like phrasing which conveys a lifetime. Her mother's fatal car accident, her stepfather's lewd, felonous hands, the colored orphan asylum in Riverdale, New York, winning. Amateur night at the Apollo Theater. The Decca years with Dizzy Gillespie and Louis Armstrong. Bebop, a Grammy-winning Mac the Knife performance. Congestive heart failure. Both legs amputated. Diabetes. Her final days wheelchaired in the backyard of her Beverly Hills mansion and her granddaughter. I just want to smell the air, listen to the birds, and hear Alice laugh. She tells her son, a soft smile on her face, fish jumping, the cotton high, and where the living is easy. Porgy and Bess. Yes. So, <laughs> before I read this piece, I, I, this is what I hear. American recordings. American mariachi style horns brass the grand old Opry. Love is a burning thing. 
Johnny Cash confesses wholeheartedly. A bass baritone who carries his guitar as if it were a Tommy gun spitting bullets. Johnny's first wife claims he wrote Ring of Fire drunk and pilled up, that it's about betrayal, bound by wild desire. Another woman's thighs, the ride of her breasts. But their daughter, Roseanne, caught in the barrage, says the song's about change, the power of love. What's interesting, I won't read the other corresponding piece, but June Carter Cash has... Uh, the, the, the Carters have another take that the, the poem is actually from uh, June's uncle who was reading from an Elizabethan book and, and he had written on a piece of paper, love is like a burning ring of desire. So I've got a, another corresponding piece that sort of uh, speaks to the, the, the possibility of, of, of either one. One poem's fodder for another, right? Yes. And yeah. there are a few pieces like that where um, there's a there's a there's a um, Billy Holiday piece, and then there's another artist who covers that same piece that uh, I use different lyrics and create a different poem. What other from. jazz greats have you done? I mean, uh, I mean, I mean, not necessarily in this book. Have you right. done others? No, this is this was a completely unique experience. Yeah, okay. It just it just it, it it just flowed right out of me. Yeah, yeah. I've done a few. I've done Dexter Gordon and um, you know um, maybe um, Coltrane or something like that. But there, it's yeah, Nina like Simone. Is just listen here. to the music and you want to write poetry. Oh, you do. Yeah, you do. yeah. And then their lives. You know, you, 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 their lives were they were troubled. Yeah, um, they were suffering and they were using music to express. A joy that they were, and, needing and to like get you at. said, you you suffered from alcohol abuse, right? Yep. And so a lot of these, a lot of artists do. I mean, it right. just seems to be come with the territory. Yeah, yeah. Uh, substance abuse and things like that. Yeah. Right. So this one is for. This one is, for my my eighties, my my middle agers, mm -hmm. who uh, who are nineteen um, eighties. Big hair, middle yeah. ages, big hair bands, Sacred Heart. Big hair, don't, don't you miss it. Oh, I don't, <laughs> I don't. <clears throat> the hair dryer, I can't believe I used a hair dryer. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I can remember that. I remember I used to have hair. <laughs> <laughs> Sacred Heart, dragons of firelight, black leather and drama, drums, Electric guitars, big 1980s hair, and the arena is loud, geological, fiora poeticus, divine insanity. We're the ship without a storm, cold without the warm, light inside the darkness. Ronnie ballads the stage, sparks flying, classic Greek theater live at the spectrum, Influenced by American 1950s opera tenor Mario Lanza, Ronnie popularized throwing metal horns, a hand gesture used by artists and fans of heavy metal music. Wear a laugh without a tear, hope without the fear, we are coming home. Brute vocals tip centers of gravity, jolts of iron and steel and brass, electroconvulsive euphoria. Ronnie's grandmother dubbed him Dio, Italian for God, because thunder is sacred, a gift from God. You know, some people read their, you know, you could be a great poet and some people read in these monotones or, or they have like a 20 minute introduction to the poem and the poem's five minutes, you know, and things like that. But I yeah. like the way you Thank are you. animated and the, you. the way I, you, you know, said I, it. There's a sense of drama you always have to have. I, I, I'm not a musician. Mm. But I feel music, and I hear music when I write and use words. Mm -hmm. And so I think that it just sort of uh, comes out in that fashion. This is, this is the, the uh, Anthony and the Johnsons that I had mentioned earlier. I, 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 I find that, you know, growing up in the 70s and 80s on Long Island, um, uh, the, 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 the gay and lesbian community had not come out yet, and... Um, Friends came out as gay and lesbian later on um, 
in my life and now with transgender people coming out and having um, a platform for expressing who they are and being who they are, um, I, I, I find this person's story quite interesting. I originally wrote it when he was Anthony, and so I had to change the pronoun to she because she identifies as a woman. My lady's story. Every note, every spark of sound that informs Antony's lips is a miracle of daylight. One thousand suns trembling, staccato rhythms rising in her, making music. If it be your will. She opens for the microphone, sings a portrait, arms, breezy pine sprills, fingers mute piano chords recalling when people didn't have words like dream, clear cut, forest, crisis, self. And if there's time for one more. Yeah, keep going because we, um, we, we let you finish your poems even oh, if the show goes off the air for the sake of the oh, tape. Perfect. So you mentioned, you mentioned um, uh, Leonard Cohen, and 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 for me, looking, listening to Le Leonard Cohen, how he evolved as an artist in his life, um, he he makes me want to understand the world better and myself better, and to accept, in a way that I I I I, I wish I was more prepared to accept. Uh, it's called. Oh, you haven't time. arrived. I have not arrived. Oh, yes. I may never arrive. Right, that's right, Thomas Merton. Closing time. Mandolin, violin, fedora, tailored black suit renaissance man, and three red robins singing into one mic. Leonard Cohen is on his knees at Mount Baldy Zen Center after five years in seclusion. Jakan, which means silence, is his Dharma name. Love is to overlook and forgive. Cohen's voice relaxes, finds an easy way to discuss self-reform. It's not a cry that you hear at night. It's not somebody who's seen the light. It's a cold and it's a broken hallelujah. He sings in Halifax, all his money gone. Retirement accounts and charitable trust funds embezzled by a close friend. Getting older, he says, in defiance of body decay, a lifelong depression has lifted. Thank you very much, Gary, for being on Poet to Poet, writer Thank you, to brother. writer.